Um, first thing is that like you just have to understand what Jin does as a champion in these type of games. So who, when you see your composition, who do you see as the primary carries? So I think you figured it out. Yeah, Camille Twitch is probably like my would probably be my answer. Um, it being that well, Camille is just a win condition of her own. She's an OP champion. And then another thing is that like Twitch is the hyper carry, and you're gonna be the supportive. Um, you're gonna be the supportive carry. And in that case, like a lot of your purposes in this fight should in these fights should not be like main, mainly maximizing dps but putting yourself in a situation where you're able to stay alive for a long time and just like ap apply um roots um like use your passive gen traps occasionally to come and get in close for autos yeah because this is that's why the champion is picked because like there's a lot of champions on the top lane that if you give them the proper setup then they will carry on their own like when there is camille when it is camille meta when it is redacted redact meta then champions like Senna, champions like Jin will show up. And until these champions get like four core and like five like max items, then they're not going to be able to deal the same damage as Zaya would. And even if they get to that point, Zaya will still out damage them. So like that's the thing that I just want to point out before we start. Is that's your role this game? Like if you're going if if that was not clear. Uh getting a little bit more into the game though. I think the level one was really good for you. You knew that Rakan didn't have flash, so like you could play this lane really aggressively like this. Like you have no problems doing that. Um, getting the f hmm? what? So if you were looking for cheater, then yeah, probably. But otherwise, um, like using cues like using cues like this is probably the reason why it it drew on too quickly. And like that's probably the only one that you're worried I was worried about. And also like the um, Pantheon like executed a melee minion that early. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but like you it ended up mattering not too much because you got a rope timer off of this, which is fine. And they didn't really take advantage of the first to three to start with anyway. And as a as a champion, you really don't care too much about first to three because you're not gonna unlock your E ability anyway. So other than that, like this is fine. Like I don't have a I don't have too big of a problem for this. Although, like, this is, like, the things that will, like, come to bite you, though. Because I think you need to, like, be a little bit more careful on just hitting minions specifically and then just, like, seeing the implications of it. So, like, it, this is, like, really easy when you, like, look at the replay. But, like, when you hold this, when you hold fourth shot like this. When you, and when you, and when that happens, then what you have to think about, like, really carefully is the implication of what happens at the end where you just have a lot of problems like, where your the caster minions technically like their caster minions technically get, your caster minions can get freed quote unquote so like what i what i mean by that is if you look at these type of situations where the wave is like still pushing back to you right so this is really good for you because Twitch is not going to be in this proximity for a very long time. So you can pretty much um, put yourself in a like really nice comfort comfortable position, and like they're not going to be able to use their level three advantage as well if you're over here, and they're going to be and you're going to be in a safe place to just auto attack while they're going to be like really close to your tower range. So they're going to feel uncomfortable. So I think the recall timer here is really um like there's a couple things that you could do. One is that after you make this play over here. You could um you could probably reset here and then get yourself get yourself like a 450 item because if you look at this wave this is a cannon wave so if these guys even if this guys try their like hardest to crash this the cannon wave is going to take majority of the damage so you're going to just so you're going to get a really good item item lead off of this and potentially even stop them from recalling just because you have pantheon you can stop their backs Although the, you run the risk, but although like the the thing to keep in mind though is that if you do this, then you run the risk of them matching your recall. And if this person is trying, but and 
if you cannot take advantage of the exp lead that you could potentially like, um if you don't have a way to like stop their exp lead because they have this they have one right now then you might be in trouble a little bit like a bit later like a wave or two and that's the play that you can do i whether or not it is good is up to you to decide um another one that you could also look at is you could stay here if you don't have a immediately like a buy that you're interested in and but if you are buying here that you cannot hit these minions reasoning is like really simple it's be especially you can't hit these melee minions at all because like after you win this trade you have to spam ping your pantheon to not last hit these minions um like to use his target procs because the only way if you look at the minion wave right now it's kind of weird right so there's two melees here there's one melee here so this melee is actually doing a lot for you if you de-aggro right now and you will because these three are going to start hitting this one and they're the melees and these casters are currently in a like are going to de-aggro and they're going to immediately hit the th and they're going to drag to you right do you see it so when it drags to you after you de-aggro it's going to hit the closest thing that is in proximity to aka that one rate melee minion that was here right mm -hmm. and like you, you have a really good wave going for you and if you don't if you take out these minions if you take out these melees then not only do you not accelerate this being taken out and then creating an even better form minion wave position for yourself but you also lose the minion that's a minion advantage that you had in terms of like the way that it was pushing because you do want to pull towards your side so the slow gets um the, so the push gets slowed down this so like that's one of the things that is that i noticed i'm gonna i might be able to point out another one because i think i have it in my notes again but stuff like this is like really important because like even in that oh whoa um even in even in that situation right here where like this one right here like when when stuff like this happens and like the wave is like, you're in a really good plus spot like this unless you're you unless you're using doing this to prep grenades like you can't use your q like that you know if there if zaya was like right here and like it was all primed up and you could go for solo kill then that'll be like the really ideal situation yeah you just need to freeze this because like if you think about it like you your, your most ideal recall is what bf right if you get bf then like you get so many options because if you start if you recall bf then you could depending on the situation of the game you could either go storm razor or you could go um like infinity edge if you're advantageous then probably you want to go ie and then you want to go for the fast spike if you are like a little bit tied up money and like you really can't afford to get that additional like you can't re um you can't get the crit cloak then you probably want the um like the dagger option go for storm razor instead and like that's the option that you could have had but if you go to pickaxe and you're kind of stuck into that build Yeah, right. This slow's really OP. Um, although like you're this is like a good way for you to reset on, so like that's that just happens. Um also like don't stay to hit towers like this. It's just a bad habit, right? I, I'm just not gonna point it out too much, but like stuff like this actually matters in the long run just because um it could in extreme situations it could lead to EXP loss. Anyway, um the game goes on and I think this is like a point that you could point like this is something that you could identify from the get-go because look at let's see the way that you reset and then let's just take a look at twitch's position where do you think he's going to go <clears throat> mm -hmm. so So there's a couple things that you could do, right? One is the one is the one that you said where you try to uh, create a freeze. Um, another option that you have is to slow down the push as much as you can in order for you or in order for Twitch to um get like do the full clear and then get back to Gromp again. 
And this is something that you need to tell this guy, otherwise he's not going to come here. He's going to see this wave and he's going to pull it back and he's just going to say that it's a freeze opportunity and just move away. When, like, you just saw, like, major spell summers being exchanged in bot lane, so you know that if Twitch ever does come here, come down here with the Pantheon setup, then it's such a free kill. Um, slow down the push. Um, so one of the things that you can do is actually thin the wave to the, thin the wave. Um, so like um, this is when gin traps become very useful. Not only does it physically slow, but it also deals a good amount of damage to the melee minions. So you have to definitely. So if in order to slow this down, um, what do you need to immediately take out right now? So it's a rather crude depiction, like it's a rather crude showing of the minion wave, but I think the answer is already in the um, in the scope. Um, okay, that's a good start. Um, you, let's we need to trim a little bit more though. Okay, this one's probably really easy to take. Um, we have this after all. Another one. Probably you want to take out the melees. So the reasoning why is because of because one, uh, melees are the most unpredictable. So they might fuck up your wave, like, just accidentally. These ones are a little bit more disciplined, so, like, they, their targeting is a little bit more consistent. Another one, another reason is because if you then, if you take these out, and if they, and if these guys are out of the picture, then Pantheon could freely just stay right here, and then just hold this wave against these two. They're not, he's not too scared. So if that happens... Then using Pantheon Shield, you can hold this wave until the next wave arrives. And if that ha if that is allowed, then you're going to be able to hold this wave for a very long time here and then just zone them out of proximity. Especially if you hold it around here and you could take advantage of this bush and Pantheon could sit here. Because you do have a pink ward, right? Yeah. You should be in, in midst of the minion wave and just prevent Zaya from auto attacking. Zaya auto range is going to be somewhere around here, right? So she's gonna to have to stand around here and hit, like stand around here to hit this wave. So if you're within, if you're just exchanging auto range with between her, then she's gonna feel uncomfortable. Besides, she's not going to do that, especially when um she doesn't have backup from Rakan, and even Rakan can't walk up into this without um risking repercussion. So this is just setting up a wave good for you, so like you could actually like, um, take advantage of this, because technically you should be reaping a reward at this point off of this minion wave setup. So probably Q right here, um, just get get the minions low. You don't really care about like hurting the casters too much, but you can't hurt them too much to the point that like two of the grenades like hit them like this. So, um, so you probably want to use grenade early, just to make sure that the melees actually get hit and not the casters. Because if you throw it right here, then it there's a chance that it drops into here, but who cares because you only you need to take down two casters anyway. Ideal freeze angle right here is usually four caster minions to like four is usually the right number, but you could even stretch it to five. Especially when there is no cannon minion alive, which you'll be taking down. And if you're able to sustain this, because you're just like you guys are pulling the wave too much closer to you now, right? So the wave is now just gonna, like, this one's gonna get hit. And then now there's just three minions, like, three and a half, and then it's just going to push back. And now you're in trouble. You just gotta think about it. Remember that you are the one with the most AD in this game, in this lane. So, like, if you manage it well, then it's going to come to board. So, like, how long does it take for two? So, let's, let's think about a couple of scenarios here now. Because now it's important. Because now we know that it's going to push back. It's inevitable. Twitch is topside, right? Look at the lane state. Do you think this guy's going to make a play right now? He's probably going to reset, right? Un Unless this Camille like accidentally runs into like a random person right now and starts fighting them, this guy's going to reset now. His HP is too low. So when is the earliest timer that this guy could come bot lane to save you if Nuna comes for a game? Okay, so it takes this guy a couple of times. Like it takes about it takes about twenty five seconds to get here. So, right to assume that, like I'll say forty five seconds to a minute after he finishes clearing this. So within this minute, 
where is one's play like what is a place that you're fine staying in and where is it where does it start getting dicey let's just some yep but you can't be here this next minute right so so where is where do you start feeling scared of nunu gangs this line right because nunu could do this very easily he could also do this very easily so what you need to do is you need to maximize the distance in between you and the Nunu and the place that he could start snowballing with. Because Rakan's flash is slowly coming back up, if not back up already. So the his initiating range, range is going to be massive. Nunu's not going to need to snowball into you to start the fight. Rakan's going to be starting it. So he's probably going to be hugging around here and he... He probably gonna run hug around here and jumping on you. So if that's the case, then you need to make the question. You need to make the decision of whether or not you can slow push or you can fast push. Because let's say that in this situation, that you actually like hard push this. After this, that what would what would be the situation? Like what would you run into? Right. So like if you have fast push right now after getting this news, it's probably a terrible idea. So you need to minimize your push as much as possible. And then at a certain point, if you realize that the Twitch is not coming up, coming down, then you just have to completely stack the wave. Because the thing is, let's say that they try to land, let, let's say that they try to freeze this, freeze this. This is what we're scared of, right? If they freeze right in front of us, then they're gonna induce CS loss. But the thing is, if the jungler is hovering and we're in a 3v3 matchup right now without Zaya ultimate, who wins? So if, so if Twitch comes down here to break the freeze for you, and then we like the Twitch shows up here and then unbreaks the freeze, can do they have the will? Do they have the means to fight us? So if that is the case, then we're not really scared about a freeze right now, right? Not too much, at least. At best, we're gonna lose. At best, we're gonna lose wave, but it, it's just inevitable. This is their this is their move. Like this is the play that they made, and like they're gonna ha they're the one who has to reap the benefits from it. So, when that happens, then we just have to wait until like this guy just gets here in time, and then just make the play around that. Because when we're in this, like, because if look at your position and look at the where that Nunu is going to start like rolling in, because it's going to start around like now, I think it's somewhere around this time. And like the reason why he actually pulls a trigger is because you go past that line. Remember the line that I drew. So just keep that line in mind and then just like see the way that you play. Mm -hmm. And this is, okay, also like this is like a body language thing too. Why in the world are they holding this? Mm -hmm. But like um, this is just their body language thing. If they, so... They know that they're playing against a Pantheon, right? And they're doing this. And even if this guy is walking away right now, this Zaya is very well in range of Pantheon W. But he decided to do this. Could he be stupid? Maybe. But he never did this before. So what, if he's doing this now, what does this imply? Jungle is 100% here. This, this is like the biggest telltale sign that you need to run. Fortunately, you're the one that who doesn't die. I think Pantheon dying is definitely better. But like, there were a lot of clues that this guy was coming beforehand as well. So like, as long as you're play, like, as long as you're able to play like this and synergize with your bot lane, you'll be fine. Uh, let's see. Let me go to nine forty. That's um, what's up. Um, I think you need to, I think this guy's not going to hold this freeze for long because one, like it's a really bad one. So, uh, uh, you can path mid for, to look for an opportunity, but I don't think you're going to get one. <laughs> That's the thing. Mm -hmm. 
maybe pan over the maybe pan over it with your camera to make sure, but that's pretty much the only thing that you should probably do. Um, shoving this wave is fine. Also, pulling it back is not bad either because it twitches proximate twitches location. Remember. General rule of thumb is that like if the wave is like this, then chances are like it's going to push up faster over here because the cannon wave just has gets hit more, right? So like this is like a moment for you to actually take advantage of the thing, same thing that they did to you, but back. But like queuing like this is most likely the reason why that doesn't didn't work. Yeah, you should definitely let it push back. Um because the thing is, um, you have to think about the consequences, like the results of you shoving this wave in. If this was, so like, um, there's a couple of scenarios, right? One is that if this cannon wave wasn't, if these cannons didn't exist, and this will be, and these waves are like this, then it's 100% the correct answer to push this. Why? Because this tank is not, um, this cannon is not going to be soaking up tower damage, so you're actually going to create CS loss. But if these exist, then you're not really, you're not really sure. Because at best, this, these guys reset around the same timer as you, if not slightly later. So you, they're going to be in this way by the time that this cannon comes back. So they're going to be picking up these five CS regardless. So like the CS, like um, pushing this for the sake of CS loss is not, not the case. So if that happens, then the best way that you could definitely, if you were meaning to deny waves and also create this play because Twitch is so close in, close in proximity, then not touching this wave is correct. Because these die if you don't touch this. And like already you're creating already a deficit that you will most likely be getting without them touching the tower. And you're getting what, 180 gold off of this, right? And if you think about the overall like thing that you may be potentially denying off the play by accelerating it earlier, then yeah, you're gonna get more gold off of it as well. Furthermore, this is just a jungler thing it doesn't apply too much in competitive because these guys actually stay here. But if I if I'm a solo queue jungler and I see this wave, I'm not going to stay here. I might stay here if I see this. Might, but this there's a higher chance that I do. Mm-hmm. So, um, couple. So I think you just need to wait a little bit, like think a little bit more about where your jungler proximity is. Um, it is more related to like competitive more than anything. In solo queue, it, it is kind of hard because you don't know what this guy is going to do. But um, getting those basics in would be really helpful because um, like I think you probably noticed by now, but a lot of the laning decisions that I do tell you is like in close in relation to where your jungler is and what he can do or what he will do. Anyway, um, like from this point on, um, there's not a lot of macro things to think about. It's more about um, team fights. So like, um, focus, change your lens a little bit in terms of that. Because now we you probably notice from here on out, like it's just fighting nonstop. So, like stuff like this is fine. I think um, I think one of the things that I did notice though is that you could use a little more guidance on when to use curtain call, when to auto attack. Yeah, team fights and also like things like this, where so at the beginning of the fight, like this, like this is how it starts, right? Where you're just contesting it and then the dragon's coming up and your jungler's not here. So I guess this is a connecting combo as well, but like when these happen and you're in proximity and the dragon's coming, then you cannot hit these minions. Because if you're putting the wave in an awkward situation where they could benefit from it, you're not crossing prio by doing this, right? That's the that's the main biggest problem. If you're hitting this with a priority for the sake of priority, then like the only way that it will make sense in that application is if Twitch is here. But you're just putting yourself in danger at this point. But this guy does overextend, and like you're and this guy is like terrible at playing Pantheon, so he takes too much damage for no reason. But off of this, like you should be really feeling really happy right now. So in that case. 
you just have to think about the amount of costs that you have versus the things that you just need to do for yourself. And like think about consequences of using curtain call here. Because let's think about this. If you are using curtain call here, who do you really need to hit? Okay. Zaya is also good too, right? Not the worst, not the best, but not the worst either. But it's so easy for him to block it, right? That's the point. So if you are doing this, you are doing it for the sake of chunking them down before the dragon is coming up. And I think that was your intention. Unless killing Okan, which is also good too, because it also sets, up for, sets you up for dragon. But the point is that you're, there was a tank right there that could really very easily regen all of his HP just by um, chomping one minion. And when that happens, then you're just you just basically used all your abilities in a situation like this. And this is what and this is what it leads to. Because imagine if you had 100 mana for this fight. You get two grenades off. If you get two grenades off, doesn't Nunu die here? 100 percent right? And if Nunu dies here. True. That is fair. And if that happens, then like you do hundred percent dies, and then you just get free dragon off of that. Mm -hmm. Because I think you, I think your ultimate was a little panicky, and also you wanted to get Rakan, which does make sense. But I think because I was trying to wonder like why we didn't you didn't win that fight because it seemed pretty advantageous, and that dragon should be yours. But the reason was just simply that yeah, you just didn't have mana to finish anybody off. And unfortunately, you are a spellcaster mage, um, spellcaster, spellcasting champion. Another one that is worth pointing out that is not necessarily connected to team fights before we get fully into team fight mode is when you see like when when you press tab. Let me see if you do actually. Yeah, you do. What do you see when so like when this happens, like you're probably like thinking about reach sets because you're getting close to your eye eagle, right? And T um, Twitch just reset, and he's back, and he has six kills. And like, if you look at his ionization, then it was terrible right? that in the past, and now he's probably really low, right? So what does that imply? So when when your Twitch takes a reset, and he has mana beard, and then warriors, and like this ionization, basically, look at his ionization, and look at Dudes. He's a whole Grand Canyon ahead in terms of gapping, this this guy. He's so rich. What does that imply about this guy's mind? Like, what does that imply about our game state? Because now we have to play around him, but we're kind of forced to. He has six skills, so we have to, like, cater to him. If this guy's off the pad, do you think he'll want to farm right now? He'll want to fight, right? This is where he's strongest, so... When that happens, you have to think about a couple of things. One is... Is it, is it wise to hit this bit, clear this minion with like this? Another thing is that it is slow pushing, and again, this is a timer where the Twitch is pathing bot because Wolves is the one that is the close, um, that is one that's coming up. And if this guy is giving you a slow shove lane, in this case, in this current stage in time, do you care about tanking these minions just a little bit to create an advantageous way for you as this one's coming in? You don't care about it too much, right? Yeah, sure, you're going to lose HP. Maybe it'll blow a little bit, but you also have Flay Fork. You have, um, you have Bloodline as well. So it's not as if you're completely devoid of sustain. Um, what about now? Give me a sec. Yeah, give me a sec. Hello? Nice. 
Okay, let me um, screen share again. There we go. Um, so, anyway. Did it last for a while? Oh, okay. So, like, off up here. You don't really want, like, you can tank this minion for a little bit and then create an advantageous situation for you so that Zaya has to overextend and try to go look for a fight. My point is that you should look for a fight right now. You should give them the opportunity to walk up and get this gift themselves in the range of danger into Twitch at all times. Because if this guy does come down and we fight this, we will 100% win. Unless this guy is like running into every single Rakan skill shot possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because if these guys like hold this wave right here, they're fucked. Um, because you're gonna be denying so much CS from them. If they ever walk up and the CS is um, it twitches one in a million there, then they're all dead. But like they can't, so they they're gonna call Nunu for backup. And if Nunu gets called for backup and there's a three v three, you still win. Because what happens is you're reset, and he just gets jumped. Which is the least ideal situation that we want. So that is the reason why your reset cost them because it was there was a conflict in between what the Twitch wanted to do and like your IE recall timer. Because it's not as if you were like really behind in terms of itemization either because you actually had good components. You had BF and you had pickaxe. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let's go back. Because here, like, was another fight, so we could take a look at this, I guess. Where do you think your camera should be? Okay. So, like, in this, right here, where do you think your camera should be? So then we have to think about we have to think about a couple of things, right? One of the one of the things is like it's where we put attention to, and in isolation. After you do this, and then chunk this guy significantly, in what world does Camille ever lose to this Urgot? Because we have to think about intervention, right? So like we need to think about where we need to put our resources to make sure that we win the fight as best as we can. So if this guy is in 75% HP and this Camille's coming in and her passive is up and her ultimate is up, this guy probably will not lose to Urgot. The health advantage is already there. The fake health advantage is going to be established with a passive. So when that happens, you probably need to help the bot lane more than you need to help the top side. Mm -hmm. Because if you look bot, I assure you, this is one of the best curtain call positions that you could probably ask for. Because if you're here and um, you, you ulti here, then they can't run. Because they're going to be forced into a Nivea chokehold, and if they get into a Nivea chokehold, then they're in trouble as well. And if they try to run long, then they're just going to get shot too. Because remember, like this Anivia is really weak and in a really dangerous position just because Pantheon's here. So the moment that Camille TPs and the one runs top, she's free game. Mm-hmm. Because now let's think about the curtain call situation now. It's a little bit less, it's a bit less, like, not as ideal because of where Nivea is now. Because the most ideal form is where your team is in between, you, you're, in, you're right behind the team and the team is in between you and the enemy, right? But where, like, and Nivea is decommissioned, so she's not going to be able to help as much. And like your call, curtain call doesn't really help them win this fight anymore because everybody's already too low. If Anivia was healthier and had a little bit more mana, then maybe the fight would have been different. Uh, let's look at a couple more points before we end. This one was one where you had to also think about like specifically where to position within the fight as well, where like you guys got the lead, um, you got you guys got Nunu, and then you're just now pos positioning like you and you guys fight again at mid lane. 
where should you position yourself? Why? Good. Another thing is for your own survival as well, because we need to think about where they specifically were last time and what vision they have in control. So they're going to be hovering around. Are they going to be hovering around top side? Really? So like if they're down here right now, do you think they have, well, like, do you have a chance to walk all the way around here and then flank us? So if we, so if we hug this side, then there's a chance that we might get flanked or we might get jumped on. But if we go here, then they're not going to be able to spend this time to go all the way around, then jump you around here, especially when they're fighting. They're not going to be doing that. So it's easier for them to do this than to do that. So that's the thing that you have to keep, like that. that's the thing that you have to know. And that is the thing that Twitch also thinks about too. Look at the way that he positions. He needs to think about it because like, it, look, at this, look at the thing that he ha had to deal with. And the reason why he did this is because he played into their range. And that's the that's his problem. And he got punished for it. But if you play towards the top side, then you're pretty much maximizing the distance that you can have in between your enemies. And also max and as a result, like maximizing your potential as well. Because how how hard is it for how easy is it for Echo to play into you if you're walking right in front of it on the same side? What if you're right here? Mm -hmm. Because he has to cover more distance, basically. And last, I guess I could start. I, I could end this with this point actually because this is like something that is like a little bit more macro too so you could apply it to more to your games why do you think you died here um we could just replay it and you can see it yeah why do you think you could why do you think you died here So we have to think about a couple things. One is, why do we shove sidelines in League? Just as a general. Good. So where where are we creating pressure points then? And what does that get? What does that allow us to do? Good. And what? Oh, at what point do we specifically and and what point do we alleviate pressure from for like uh to rephrase it what part of the map becomes significantly weaker in terms of band advantage when we shove sidelines okay good so like that's the entire point right and so this movement in essence is correct except that it is one step early because these waves are going in yes but we're not seeing them take it yet. When they, when we do see them take it, then we could walk forward because we know that there's less people here, and they're going to be walking in here, right? That's the, this is a very basic movement in league. But if we skip steps and walk in one step earlier, then this is exactly what happens, and this will happen every single time. Yeah, this is, and I'm. I think this is a really good way to end it as well, just because this is how an AD carry could throw a game. If you were not Jin, and let's say that you were Samira, or if you were um, like Caitlyn, they will run for Baron right now. And Baron will be lost, and then we'll be in so much trouble. So like, if just make sure that you don't make these mistakes and just keep an eye on the side lane before you walk in like this, and then this mistake shouldn't happen. All right? Do you have any questions? I think you could you could definitely experiment more with the way that the wave is working, uh, the wave is managed. Um, you need to experiment more for sure. You will make mistakes. Like, uh, 
don't get me wrong, like you're not gonna get everything perfect, but you just need to, like, you actually will benefit so much from watching your replay and then thinking about what you could have done or what you could have done different in terms of the way that the way it works. Like what what if I didn't use grenade here? What if I didn't use like specific spells here? What or like Eve or the vice versa? Where what if I fast 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 push the wave here, and things like that? Um, create a create like a journal, or like a little like spreadsheet of like things that you identified and the consequence like what would have happened as a result and then just write that down for yourself and then just keep thinking about it because like the point of writing it down is so you keep thinking about it basically and what you will be pleased to notice is that like eventually you're just gonna be thinking about it a lot more because you're forcing yourself to and whether or not it be correct the f fact is that if you are thinking about it then chances are you will arrive to the answer better as long as your fundamentals are there and i think your fundamentals are not um fundamentals are there in terms of that Another thing is that when you are like thinking about like specific position, like your, your role in the game, just also be wary about the way that you position because you seem to also play into the ranges of the enemies a bit too much for their comfort. So just be a little bit wary of that. And like that is just match experience, like game experience more than anything and just like knowing what people can do to you. So like my advice to you is like, I think if you, I think one of the reasons why like you're probably being held back and like not being able to push towards some um, higher LP and grandmasters because you get killed too much by the solo carries. Because I see that happening. I think you're gonna die. I think you're gonna die a lot. I think you're gonna die a lot. A lot to like, um, you're gonna die a lot to Yone players. You're probably gonna die a lot to Nautilus players and Leona players. Like, so, if, so if that happens, like it, so my le advice for you, if that is the case, then is. Remember the way that they play, and then just learn how to play around it. Um, just be, just be a little bit more hesitant. And if you like think of the if you play the game like this critically, then you're you will climb. Because you're gonna remember what other people did to you, and then you're gonna be able to respond to it or play around it and prevent it. Because like that's like the dilemma of league, in my opinion. You need to get to higher MMR to improve, but in order to get to higher MMR, you need to improve yourself. And like the way that you do that is just being self-conscious and just being aware of like what mistakes you're making and you should be fine. Does that answer your question? Good. Is there anything else that you have? Um, no problem. I'm probably going to be doing this a bit more often, like as the breaks come in. So if you're interested, then just um, keep in touch. And then when I say that I w I'm like look open for more of these, then I'll just like let it let you guys like just drop it on Twitter again. So like, yeah, it won't be like it doesn't have to be a one off thing. That's just all I'm that's the point that I'm trying to get across. Great. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Um, okay, then. We're good, then. All right. Take care. See ya. Yep. No problem.